Welcome back to a story to tell from the campus of Dixie State University. Thanks for being with us at this Christmas holiday time. And if I forget, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and Happy Hanukkah and whatever else is appropriate. Bill, how you doing? I'm doing great. We have a very special guest again with us today, Bill Brigg. Bill, tell me, what, you, what are you doing these days? What aren't I doing? What are you doing? Uh, besides writing another new book I've written on uh, drug recovery and and helping families deal with their teens. I'm working, uh, trying to get people, kids that are on the street. We have a lot of homeless kids that are on the street today, and the numbers are really staggering, especially during the Christmas holiday season. And then people that are trying to uh, get off drugs and pornography and alcohol. We have what they call through the church a 12-step program. The LDS Church. The LDS Church, yes. We have them all over the country. It's all uh, incognito. We don't use nothing but first names when they go. Uh, and it's an open circle, and it's all kept confidential. And they can go in there and talk about whatever they're dealing with with their problems. The 12-step program I've been working with now about a year. Uh, the location I am, of course, is in the Washington uh, Chapel there across from uh, the old Nyson store. And then uh, my wife and I also go to uh, the prison here uh, once a week at Purgatory and deal with the male and female prisoners. It's amazing, I asked him the question, I says, of all the crimes that most of the people are committing to get in places like this, what is the, the main thing that causes most of them to break the law? And they say, uh, they said drug addiction. Better than 85 to 90 percent of the guys in prison and the girls or in prison, and it's breaking up the homes, and that's what's causing a lot of the homeless kids. Now, you say drug addiction is the main thing that's getting them there, but do they, other, do, they do other crimes because of their drug addiction, or what's Well, the... uh, I'm a convert to the church. My drug addiction uh, spanned over 30 years, starting at age 22, and most people, when they want to, it's drugs and alcohol. But it's such a strong addiction that they take their rent money, they take their food money before they feed their kids. And then if they can't get the money, the honest way of holding a job or their wife working or whatever, then most of the time they go out and start selling the drug or they go out and steal. Because that addiction is so powerful and so strong because of so many drugs. And most of them start out getting addicted to prescription drugs. Myself, it was a simple crosstalk. But the point of it was, I was hurting real bad because I had just lost my wife and family. Somebody introduced drugs, and this is where the homeless kids are getting into these groups. You're down, you're not feeling good, you're hurting, and somebody says, here, try this, it'll make you feel good. And it does, for a while. But then you end up coming down off the drug or the alcohol, and you need more, because you don't want to lose that feeling. And drugs and alcohol and, and lead to the pornography and all the other things mm -hmm. are so strong. Uh, it's like medication when you're in pain. You got this pain really bad. Uh, I got off drugs and I was clean for oh, about five years and then I had back trouble. And the doctor prescribed uh, oxycodone to me and morphine. Well, you don't give an ex druggy oxycodone and morphine for a painkiller. Because I ended up dropping five of those a day, and then one in the morning, and one at night of the morphine. And my wife, just like all the wives and the kids say to their family, their husbands or whatever, she didn't know me. I'm in the church, and she didn't even know me, because I wasn't aware of it. So I finally went back to the doctor so and he, rectified it. So this was something that was legal, that was oh, prescribed yeah. for you? Yes. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that kick off the problem, huh? Yeah. What can be done about that? Well, one of the things that a lot of the doctors are really trying to work, uh, work towards uh, is, um, is understanding what the kids are addicted to. It's kind of hard. You know, kids are not going to go in there and say, oh, yeah, I, I don't want to take morphine. I don't want to take, because they don't know a lot of them. So they really need to do more uh, what they call a urine test to see if they're abusing the drug, because most of the time they're going to. I was taking over well, about 500 units a day of the oxycodines. And uh, it, it creeps up on you without you even knowing. And finally, I went into the doctor and made them aware of it. There's a pain specialist here. They're excellent doctors. 
and uh, Dr. Empey, I know he won't mind me using his name. He was one of the uh, gentlemen that had us, him and his son, a son and another friend were, were um, you know, in another country and got really sick. But the point I'm saying is more and more of the doctors are trying to rectify this. We as the public, we as missionaries, we as the church, we as families need to be aware of it. And one of the things that you need to be aware of is you need to be aware of the kids' mood swings. Most kids do not know how to talk to kids. I didn't have family. I was locked away seven of my first 14 years of life because they didn't know what to do with me. It was easier just to shut me away. So I never knew what love was. I didn't know how to be a father. And because of my drug addiction, I lost seven of my first 10 kids. And today they still haven't forgave me for what I did. Hmm. Well, I seem to remember reading somewhere that Utah is one of the biggest abusers of the prescription drug problem. Is that mm -hmm. correct? That's what it is, yes. Uh -huh. Give you an example. Uh, give you an example because of the situations. Uh, in Hurricane Elementary Schools right now, there's 42 in the Hurricane Elementary School. There's 42 kids homeless. Because Elementary, of drugs? Drug-related problems. Uh, Dixie High, 41 percent. 41 percent? 41 kids, I mean. I'm sorry. 41, 41 kids. kids. My apology. 41 kids are homeless. And these are the only ones that are reporting it because they want to get, they're trying to get meals. Uh, Temecula, kids. Intermediate, 28 kids are homeless. Uh, Dixie Middle School, middle school, 26 kids are homeless. And the staggering part is, in 2016, there was 991 kids homeless in Washington County. <laughs> in Washington County, which takes up a little, is, takes up part of Cedar, St. George, and Washington. This year we started out, we ended up with 1,163 kids homeless. That's amazing. <laughs> when I heard this, that's why I ran to you, when I heard this, I cried. I know what it's like to live on the street. And I said, these kids are on the street. What are we going to do about it? So I went and I spoke to the school superintendent. I, I got to the bottom of this. And they say most of the times the cops, when they pick up these kids, they take them to uh, places uh, like Switch Point. Right now, uh, they've got permission to build a house somewhere here in St. George. We need, there's no low income places to put these kids. And you can't let if I was a volunteer, say, I'd call them and say, well, let the kids come, let a couple of kids come and stay with me. The state can't do that because of the liability. So it has to be under that control. So what I'm saying mostly, I think, to all the parents and everything is be aware of your kids' mood swings. Talk to your kids. Spend time with them. More importantly than talking to them is listening, listening. to them. I worked, at a, I worked at a school for kids. I can't name it because I didn't get permission. The outstanding school for kids. I became pops to hundreds and hundreds of kids all over the country because of it. And one of the reasons why the kids related to me so well is because I listened. And why did I listen? Because I was one of them. Parents don't know how to talk to their kids about this stuff. We need to educate them. And that's what we're trying to do. One of the big problems with who we are and what we do, it's all about us. It's me. And a friend of mine, well, actually, it was me that came up with this. All you need to know about getting along with people, whether it's your wife or your husband or your children or anybody, your boss, is the word all. The A stands for be aware outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. The first L stands for listen. Mm -hmm. And the second L stands for learn. And too often we're so bound up in me, 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 even as parents, we don't get involved this way with other people. Yeah. We want to drive them or correct them or control them. And we need to be aware of them, aware of their needs, listen to them, and learn 
Uh, exactly. You should be talking. I shouldn't be talking. No, because you're saying the exact words, and and, and put another put another L in there just in, in, for a, a, a good strength one, and understand the word love. Love. Love, because most parents, my problem growing up is I didn't know what love was until I was 52. Never knew what it was. We use love very loosely. You say you you say you love your kids. We'll prove it. What's your kid doing today? What's your son doing today? Well, he's at school. Well, what does he do after school? Well, he, he uh, what's your daughter do after school? Well, she better come home. What do you mean she better? Is she coming home after school? Who's she hanging out with? And most of the kids are good kids, but it just takes that one. And a drug dealer, that's what they do. They get in these little groups, they entice them with this drink, they entice them with this drugs. And don't get me wrong, St. George and Hurricane Police are excellent. I know some of them. They, they're, they're fighting a, a, almost an endless battle. And yes, it's getting out of hand. And the people from LA, New York, Boston, Chicago, all these places, they're coming into St. George, they're coming into Utah. And it's a candy state for them. Why is that? Because it's easy to sell. Back to the word love. Do you know where that word comes from? Do you know what it really means? You tell me. I desire your well-being. That's what love means. I like it. So if we really love people, we would concentrate on them and their well-being. And that's what love is all about. I like It's not that. about me. It's mm -hmm. not about you. It's about everybody else. And we forget that sometimes. We I do. desire your well-being. That's we great. The word all, can you use another L? Love. Love. Tell me about your book. Well, my newest book is, is just helping families. Um, I was encouraged by so many people to write this. It's about my life and other lives, dealing with people, dealing with drug problems, uh, relationship problems, family problems. They're all true stories. Not, the only thing edited out of the book is the Lord's name in vain. I wouldn't let that. And uh, foul language like the F word. But everything's in their words. And my, my life alone, the feedback on it has been amazing. What I went through and lived through. I've been dead, se OD several times. The Lord has kept me alive. Everybody told me I would not see 40. I'm 71 today. And I have a burden for our kids. I have a burden for people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol. I went through it. And this book is helping a lot of people. The feedback has been phenomenal. How can you get a copy of the book if you well, want? Well, um, right now we're going to try to get it in the stores. But right now, uh, they'd have to call for one until I can figure out where I'm going to put it. I haven't decided. It's fairly new, just out. What so, number can they call? 435-673-5448. Say it one more time. 435-673-5448. But make sure when, you, when I say hi, you say the book. I get too many phone calls. And they want, you know, where to send my kids. Where, where could you, can you do a fireside? Can you do a speaking engagement? Uh, this is the book. And I promise you, if you read this book, it will really help you a lot to understand. I need this. the help. It's right here. <laughs> well, you know, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against therapists. I've sat in front of them, but the trouble with most of them, and I love them, is they just haven't had the street experience. They need to take some of the therapists and take them out in the street undercover. Jesus, when he walked the earth, what did he do? He walked among them. And I'm not trying to preach to people, but that's what you've got to do. And I was blessed. You know, I, I went to work, I went to work, back to work at a place called Sterling Courts here in St. George. And I believe in honesty and fairness. And, and what I'm trying to say about a Sterling Court is it's one of the most honest senior living places in St. George. And if you want a good place to live with honest, good people, Sterling Courts is it. But the point of it is most people don't know where to go to find the truth. You want a mechanic, where do you go? I don't know. That's just it. People today are, it's, it's changed a lot. 
But what I'm trying to say is simply this, is we need to make the parents aware of the kids and get them some help. Help the kids, under, the parents understand the kids. Because if you don't, you're going to lose them. Tell me a little bit more about the 12-step program. I'm familiar with it a little bit. When I lived in California, the church down there was involved in it. And uh, of course, they're involved everywhere. But uh, oh, what does it, how, how does someone get involved in that? How do they get Very it? simple. Get a hold of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's the simplest way to do it. It's LDS Family Service. It's addiction recovery program. And basically what it does is this. I'll just give you an idea. It doesn't preach to the kids about the church or anybody. You can go as long as you're 12 years old and over. But to give you the 12 steps, if I can name them real quick, the first step is uh, uh, admit that you have a problem. The second one, uh, come to believe the power of God can help you. The third one, decide to turn from your ways. Make, fourth one is make a searching and fearless written moral inventory of yourself. And it goes on and on and on down. And each week, and we repeat it after we've gone through it once, we repeat it. And they're open every night, everywhere. But every night there's a program somewhere. So it's available any night you want any to go. Any night you want. The only ones that are not family related where you would come with your husband and wife is the pornography. The pornography ones are done separate because you can't have the men and the women or whatever in the same room because they don't open up and talk about their problem. But everything else is the, the mother can come with their child as long as they're over 12. Um, let me rephrase that, over 18. Okay. And uh, they can come with their kids, they can come with their husband or wife. But I'm telling you, just in the year that I've been working this program, it is amazing because they get in the meetings and they talk about their problem. And the amazing part about it is the husband's got a problem and the wife's there to support him. And they're about to break up. I know a family that went through that. And they had two little kids, but the husband knew he had a problem. He got involved in the 12 steps. Their marriage is strong again. They're happy and they're doing well. They're working together because they recognize the problem. But this 12 step, this is a, it, it is an amazing program. So if you want to get help and you need it fast, get a hold of any LDS church, okay? You can call it the main office in Salt Lake. In fact, I think there's a number here. Um, it's just family service. We have an office here in uh, Washington. But get a hold of them. It's worth, it's worth the effort. And you don't have to be a member of the church. You don't have to be a member of the church. It doesn't cost anything. It's free, and it's all in And God. they don't preach the doctrine of the church there. Nope. In fact, they even says there, this is what you say here stays here. We don't preach the church. We preach how God helps you, how Jesus Christ helps you. But the main thing I want everybody to understand is this. This is important. To get off drugs and get off alcohol, you got to want to. That is if the you, key. You, if you don't want to get off drugs and alcohol, you're not going to do it. But what this program does here is helps you recognize that you can. Look at me. Successful, happily married, again, happy for once. And 30-some years of hard drugs. Yes, I've lost some kids. But I'm more at peace today than I have been in my entire life. I'm happy about life, and I enjoy helping people get their lives in order. You can have an enjoyable life. You can have peace, and it's there. You just got to take it and run with it. It's the Christmas season. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yes, the Christmas season. What I'm trying to do right now is be aware of kids you see, homes you see, people that are having problems in your church or in your neighborhood that are struggling. There's a lot of homes that may have a tree or not a tree. But see if there's something you can do. We spend so much money at Christmas for nothing. Try to help somebody, and especially the homeless. When you see a homeless person, give them, some, don't have no money, but give them a hot meal. Give them a gift card to go eat somewhere. Buy them a hot meal. See what they need. The gentleman I talked to over at, uh, uh, over at the, uh, the school, 
He wanted 20 coats to give to the homeless. He got over 600. <laughs> what I'm saying is people want to help, but they don't know how. They don't know what to do. So get a hold of the churches. Get a hold of the, the LDS uh, uh, church. Get a hold of uh, the superintendent of schools. Get a hold of these places. Even the police department will tell you. Everybody's always afraid of the police department. Don't be afraid of the police department. They're here to help. They want the kids off the street. They don't want, if, they, if somebody's breaking the law a hard time, they need to go to jail. But sometimes they're just lost. Right. And the police department here, St. George Police Department is, is one of the finest. And Washington, I know. I work with them now. And they are great. What advice would you give people other than to attend these seminars or whatever it is that might be able to get them to make the decision to change their life. You said you can't do it. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. We have to do it for ourselves. Is there any thing that we can think about or tell them that would help them to understand what to do to do that? Well, usually what I tell people is what's your goal in life? Most people don't know what it is. So we try to, I, I try to tell them to get a goal in life. And then whatever that goal is, go for it. And then Find out how to get help. That's why I came here today. Find out to get, how to get help. Yes, most people don't know how to get off of it because it's something they enjoy because they, th they think it covers up the pain. Are they happy in their marriage? Are they happy with their kids? Are they happy with whatever they're doing? And if not, that's what they need to do. Get help. There is help for everybody. And this Christmas season, I think everybody should put a little note under the tree starting January starting tomorrow, I'm going to get help from my addiction to whatever it is. Chocolate. You got me. You got you. Chocolate, <laughs> drugs, alcohol. If I can get off 35, well, it's almost 35 years of hard drugs, you can too. I can get off chocolate. Huh? You can get off chocolate. I too. gave it up last week. Yeah. There's people that come to our meetings just for chocolate. Is there really? Oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing some of the things that people are addicted to. Pornography is real big because of the drugs and alcohol. You can go on the internet and get pornography. It's sad. It really is. But people that want to get help, it's out there. Get a hold of the LDS uh, Addiction Recovery Program. This program is amazing. Get a hold of your police department. They're not wanting to take you to jail. They're wanting you to help. Well, isn't their motto to protect and serve? Mm -hmm. It is. Most of the people are always afraid of cops. Don't be afraid of them. I used to be, until I found out what they're all about. And their interest, especially in St. George and Washington, their interest is to help them. Most cops are family men. They don't want their kids out there. And when they see these kids out there and families breaking up, it really hurts them. It's terrible. It is. It's terrible. What else do you want to talk about? Well, I think one of the things I'd like to say mostly is remember this Christmas season to share. Remember somebody that's less fortunate. Find out about families that are hurting for food. Find out about families that are really struggling with their kids and things like that. It's okay to be no nosy incognito, especially when it's for a good reason. Uh, find out in your church how you can help. Get involved with a needy family this Christmas. Make that a good Christmas gift to somebody. If it's just buying a bag of groceries. I went to Texas one time. We didn't have a tree or no furniture. We had a mattress. The rats were so bad in the, in the apartment we had, we had to put steel wool on the walls because they were chewing through to get our son. And the people brought over a bag of groceries and a tree for us for that Christmas. And we didn't even know who they were. And that was almost as good as a bag full of money because it showed love and compassion. And that always stuck to me. And I'll tell you, if you really want to have a joyful Christmas, help somebody in need. Do something for somebody else. I'm not to, even if it's a family that you know of or a family member, but do something to help somebody. Most people have a closet full of stuff they never look at anymore. It's sad. But do something for somebody else. And I'll tell you, you'll have, like I tell drug addicts, 
if you get off drugs and get Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the best high you'll ever have. You should know. I do. Uh, many years ago, one of our daughters came to me and said, I've been given an assignment in uh, middle school to talk to an old person and find out what makes them happy. And I said, do you consider me an old person? And she was speechless for a minute. And then she said, well, maybe. But then she asked me what makes me happy. You know what I told her? I have a feeling, but what'd you tell her? You cannot be unhappy if you're helping other people. Bingo. You said it. That's it. <laughs> it's simple. It's what Christ tells us to do. We all get involved with ourselves and forget about other people. Exactly. And we don't really have to do a lot, just acknowledging them, just talking with them, listening to them, mm -hmm. and helping them financially if we can. But there's only in the, one of the scriptures, there's uh, some guy giving a speech about helping other people. And he says that, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, and probably making it sound un ununderstandable, the only qualification you have is if you can do it. You're not expected to do what you cannot do. Exactly. But if you can do it, do it for them, and it makes you happy. It will, it will. It just, it's so simple to do something for someone. And you don't have to advertise it. No. Even on their doorstep. No. You know, uh, there's ways of helping people and being incognito. Right. But you'll never be more happier than doing something for someone in need. Seriously, you'll love it. And that's what, that's what we're taught in our church, to help somebody in need. Well, I think that's the great commandment, love your neighbor. Exactly. And back to that love, I desire your well-being. That's what love means. Exactly. Bill, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, tell. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you for being with us on A Story to Tell this Christmas season. and. Merry Christmas. Merry Thank Christmas. you for being with us. We'll see you next year.